Assalamu alaikum to all and let's get started with a new episode of the Health Coach series with me Muhammad Al Ghasim nagging you into a better health. Our topic for today is one that we've covered in our previous episode but we must cover it once more because no matter how many times I emphasize on it it still needs more emphasis. A name that is not strange to our ears and the serial killer present in almost every household the sweet killer diabetes. In our previous episode, we've talked about the causes of the disease and explained how our diet and food intake can affect our chances of getting diabetes. We've also discussed the first-line treatment options without having to resort to using medications which involves exercise and diet control. Then we summed it up by busting myths about diabetes. Now in this episode we'll discuss some general statistics about diabetes worldwide and then we'll discuss the possible complications as well as new updated researches regarding this topic. We hope everyone gets the benefit from us sharing this information. But before anything, we'd like to repeat with the sum up segment with diabetes in 60 seconds. Diabetes mellitus, or literally sweet urine, is a disease discovered by the Latin a long time ago when they noticed that some people urinate more than others. So they divided those people into two types of people. Ones whose urine tastes sweet, now simply called diabetics for the general public, and ones whose urine isn't so sweet, but we won't dive much into that. Of course, this came from the fact that in the past they used to use tasting a person's urine as a form of a diagnostic test. Some of the risk making you more prone to getting diabetes is being more than 45 years old, living a sedentary lifestyle, the fact that one of your family members has the disease, increased blood pressure, having previously had the disease while you were pregnant, and of course being overweight or obese. Symptoms of diabetes include most commonly having no symptoms at all and the others we've previously talked about. Complications include problems in the retina in the eye, nerve damage in the limbs, heart problems, kidney problems, and of course the diabetic foot. And finally, for treatment, first and foremost is diet and exercise, and if that doesn't work, then medicines, and if that doesn't work, then insulin jabs. That was diabetes in 60 seconds. Alright, let's shift quickly to the numbers segment where we talk about statistics regarding diabetes worldwide and even more specifically here in the Middle East and North Africa. In statistics distributed by the International Diabetes Federation in 2013, four Arabic countries have topped the world in the percentage of people with impaired glucose tolerance levels in the blood. Kuwait, Qatar, and UAE are the top three globally, with Bahrain following closely behind at number five. And my Malaysian abongs are right behind us at number six. Congratulations. What is strange about these statistics is that Japan is the ninth globally, even though obesity levels in Japan is actually one of the lowest in the world, with only 3% being obese. Other statistics have found that in urban areas in Saudi Arabia, Oman, and Iraq, it can reach up to 25%. However, because they have a high population of residents in rural areas, these people kind of even out or dilute the national percentage of diabetes, unlike Qatar, Kuwait, Bahrain, and the UAE. Globally, we see that the deaths caused by diabetes or diabetes-related complications is highest in Russia, China, India, Brazil, and the United States. In the Middle East, the percentage of deaths by diabetes in females who are 60 years old reaches up to 25%. And I can almost testify that the percentage in males is lower because they end up dying by heart diseases before they get a chance to die because of diabetes. Alright, the tests done to diagnose diabetes are pretty simple. The simplest one being this one right here. You fill it up and prepare it. Clean the finger with some alcohol and jab yourself. Fill up the film with your blood and stick it into the reader. What this will read is your random blood glucose. But if you're asked to check your fasting blood glucose, you'll need to be fasting beforehand. So it's easier to do it first thing in the morning when you wake up, provided that you didn't have any midnight snacks. With time, patients have started trying to lie to the doctors. They'd be eating high amounts of sugary food and not sticking to their diet plans. And just the day before meeting the doctor, they would fast before the test to make it look like they've been compliant. Well, the doctors have outsmarted them. 
There's a product in your hemoglobin present in your bloodstream known as HbA1c or sometimes simply called A1c. Now the red blood cells in your blood contains hemoglobin which helps distribute the oxygen. We found that the amount of glucose you're taking can be measured from the hemoglobin itself. And since the hemoglobin's life is about three to four months in your blood, we can measure the estimate blood glucose levels in your body for the past three months. That way, you can't trick your doctor by fixing your diet a week or two before the checkup. So it's best that you just comply from the beginning because at the end of the day, it's all for your benefit. And now for the research segment, where we take a look at an interesting research update, and this week we'll talk about deep brain stimulation boosting insulin sensitivity. The Science Translation Medicine magazine has published a report in May of 2018 about a status of a patient under investigation. A Dutch man being treated for obsessive compulsive disorder with deep brain stimulation was found that his diabetes symptoms also improved. A team of researchers, most of them based at the Academic Medical Center in the Netherlands, recruited him and 14 other patients already using deep brain stimulation in the same brain region via surgically implanted electrodes. The investigators discovered that the participants' insulin sensitivity was higher when their brain zapping devices had been on for 17 hours than when they had been off for the same period of time. And the result was that insulin sensitivity was higher during it being on. This might indicate that there is a link between insulin levels and dopamine levels in the blood and may open up new ways to permanently treat diabetes in the near future. Of course, some people are still skeptical about it, but let's just hope for the best. That's been all guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to tune in next week when we talk about another more prevalent disease known as the silent killer to find out why. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. Salam. Peace.